How you guys doing? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, 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 hey. Welcome everybody to the live stream, man. Right now we're about to do a live Q&A about acne. I want to do a little disclaimer right now. I don't have any actual professional qualifications to be talking about acne as a medical professor, professional. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a dermatologist, I haven't got a degree or anything in acne. I've had extremely bad acne and I've been through it and I've tested a lot of different things to get my acne better and clear. So that's where I'm sp speaking from, is my opinion, anecdotally. So don't take any of this professional advice. Can't sue me now. Yeah. All right guys, so pop in with questions that you have. I'm just gonna address each one as I can. I know a lot of you guys have the same questions, so this should work pretty well because a lot of people are gonna be asking the same thing. So I'm gonna go through each answer. I'll try to keep it down to like two to five minutes uh, and we'll try to keep the whole stream down to 60 minutes. <laughs> There's a lot of them coming in right now. Oh my gosh, there's 140 people in here. <laughs> I thought there was gonna be like 12 people in here. All right, let's go. Um, advice on dating with acne. So that's actually a really good question. Uh, let me turn this light off just a little bit here. Let me just see and let me turn off the AC. Yeah, maybe this will help. Maybe I won't be so blown out. All right. Whatever, still blown out. You know I love you guys. Advice with acne and dating is um, when you are younger, people are going to be more judgmental and they're going to be more loud about it. When you're older, they're going to be a little less loud. So they might be talking to their friends behind your back. You might not hear it quite as much. But when you're a kid, they're going to be making fun of you and stuff. Either way, it doesn't matter. When people are making fun of you, when people are being mean to you because you have acne, don't let it stress you out at all. What those people are doing is basically just saying like, hey, I suck. <laughs> like, I'm not mentally mature enough to treat you as a good person just because of one small physical thing that you can't control. So we're not able to work together. But really, it's an advantage because you don't actually want to get trapped in a relationship with that person. When they're doing that, you do not want that person. So it's great because when they do that, you are able to see immediately that they're a bad person for you. And in the long run, it's going to screw you over. So you just basically have an advantage by having acne because it's screening people out of your life. Okay, uh, it is so hard to answer everything, so I'm sorry everybody that's not getting your question answered, just keep throwing it in there. How to treat back acne. Um, so body acne and face acne, this is actually a really good question because a lot of people ask that. Face acne and body acne um, are just predispositions based off of your genetics. So some people are going to be breaking out only on their body, some people are only going to break out on their face, and some people have both. I was mostly face. Uh, but when I got to the higher part of my calories and uh, milk was the thing that really triggered me to have acne, I was drinking so much milk. I was having a gallon of milk a day. I was having at least 150 grams of, of whey protein powders and, and bars and things like that. So I was causing my own acne. And when I was having 5,000 calories and really pumping in as much whey protein as possible, that's when my acne didn't just stay on my face. It actually finally like started moving down. And I have it on my shoulders and a little bit on my, on my like upper chest here and a little bit on my upper back. I didn't get it like fully down to like my mid back and my lower back like some people get. Now, I just say that to say that, uh, you know, you're disposed different ways to, do, to have your acne come out. So it's going to be the same way you treat it. You're going to have to like do elimination diet, try different foods, go for a week re just removing like dairy and then do another week where you remove soy, remove gluten and see if they help you or make it worse. Um, then you can also look at products that you're using and do eliminations with your diet, with your, with your products that you're using too. But what I will say right now for everybody who's listening, who hasn't heard me say this a bunch, if you are dealing with acne right now and you have uh, not tried everything, you haven't tried like diet manipulation stuff, try removing dairy out of your diet entirely. And I don't mean just like taking out milk. I mean like don't have any milk powder or whey protein powder in the ingredients. Don't have anything with dairy at all. Get at least 12 to 16 servings of vegetables and try to get a gallon of water in every day. Those three things should help at least minimize the severity of it. And then from there, you can kind of try more things. Okay, so another one. Um, hey, just wonder what you recommend for hyperpigmentation. I currently use aloe vera gel, gel and it works, but it's a very slow process. Yeah, so redness is a, is, is a good question. I, I think I've done a, a video about redness before, but redness is a pretty common problem when it comes to acne. And a lot of people are always asking, what do you do about redness? Um, it's a completely different story than actual active acne. Because actual active acne is your body is releasing sebum oil through your glands. You have sebaceous glands under your skin. So you're just re releasing oil, just like anywhere else in your body, but just more concentrated in a certain type of oil. And when it gets clogged up, that's when you get acne. So that's blackheads, which are dried open comedones, open zits, and then you have the whiteheads, you have cysts. All that's active, but redness is not actually acne. It's 
like you could be completely 100% clear, but you could have a completely red face. And it doesn't, uh, yeah, it doesn't like have anything to do with each other. Um, the, the things that I have found best with my redness is just giving it time. Like um, right after Accutane, I, I was getting clear. I was pretty clear. I only have a couple pimples and stuff, but I would have tons of redness. And I asked my doctor a bunch, and he would, he would basically just say, there's nothing we can do about it. Keep using your Retin-A. So he had prescribed me Retin-A, which is like a topical uh, vitamin A ointment you can put on your face, and it removes the top layer of dead skin. So what it does over time is it helps with removing active acne, but if, if we're not talking about active acne, then it helps remove that top layer of dead skin over and over and over and over, and which helps get rid of some of your scars, because I don't know if you guys can see, I have some scars here, but they've gotten so much better. They're like rolling scars uh, after that first year of Retin-A. Um, but Retin-A also helps with redness. The biggest thing with redness, that, redness is literally just giving it time. You just gotta give it time. Um, I've heard vitamin C serum helps really well. I'm not sure about aloe vera, Luckily, honestly, I hate to say this, but I didn't have to deal with too much redness um, other than that first, like, maybe six months after Accutane. And I kind of just, I didn't really care. So I didn't really look too deeply into it. And then it started to fade over time. So what do you think about low dosing Accutane, 10 to 20 milligrams a day a week for a longer period of time? So that's like one strategy. The idea with Accutane, this is actually a really cool topic. The idea with Accutane, the way that my dermatologist explained Accutane to me is that Accutane works by over time accumulating vitamin A, or at least this derivative of this specific version of vitamin A, into your body by gathering in your fat cells and being in your blood. So after a long enough time of taking the same dose over time, it's you're actually building up more. So even if you're taking 50 for the duration of it, by the time you're six months in, you have so much more Accutane in your body. And that's when it starts working, is when you get to a high enough cumulative dose that your body starts reacting to it. My cumulative dose was Ridiculous. So we went from 20 milligrams a, a day to 180. Actually, I believe we went to 220. Now that I think about it. Uh, so for a while there, I was taking 220 milligrams a day. I just need to get my my cumulative dose so freaking high, uh, and that was tough. Um, but I would say that low dosing is a strategy that some people do. I wouldn't say that it's better or worse. I'd say you have to like really think about it and decide whether it's going to be right for you. Uh, but yeah. Yo, I'm about to do live streams all the time. I love this. You guys are awesome. I didn't know there were so many people in here showing love and stuff. Super cool. Okay, so the next one. What's your current skincare routine? Thank you for asking that one. That's really, that one's really good. The reason I want to do this live stream is because a lot of these questions get asked over and over and over. And I don't want to put out a similar video every couple of months because I feel like some people will be like, yo, I watched this channel all year and you put out this video like three times this year. Uh, what's my current skincare routine? My current skincare routine is lots of water. I just said that so I could drink some water, but it really is. Uh, lots of water, I do lots of veggies, no dairy, so the diet is heavy. It's probably the most important part of my acne uh, skincare routine now. I only wash with um, cold water if I'm just going to wash my face, um, or I get my hot shower in and then I finish with cold water on my face. I don't know if it's pseudoscience or if it's true, but hot water is opening your pores, so I like to finish with like 30 seconds of cold water on my face and that helps close them or I feel like it helps close them. I don't know. I'm just telling you what I do. Um, I, I don't use any, any cleansers or any sort of product right now. And not to say that those things don't work when you have less severe acne, but just because there's nothing really going on with my face right now, I'll get a couple of little ones. Like you might you know, see it on my mustache right here. I have like a little tiny one and I've gotten a couple of, I mean, you guys just saw the video that, that went really viral on my channel. I've had a couple of pimples here and there, um, but I don't get a lot of them. So I'm not actively trying to make it get less severe. I'm just okay with having one or two pop up, a, you know, every week or two weeks. Honestly, I actually kind of like when I have a zit now because it's just like part of who I am. Um, but because of that, I, I haven't like seeked out a treatment. If it was getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse every week, I would be like trying this, trying that, trying this, trying that. But because everything's working where it is right now, I don't want to change what's not broken. So I'm having like tons of cold water whenever I'm uh, washing my face, hot shower and with cold um, and no specific um, types of products. If I am going to use a moisturizer, um, I've been using Aveeno because I've bought in like a 30 pack palette of it because I love that stuff. Uh, I haven't figured out another moisturizer after that one, but Aveeno has always worked really well. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be looking into more, uh, mo more moisturizers to, to try after that. 
I really want to get rid of all the di dairy in my, in, but my family isn't letting me do it. What do I do? Have a serious conversation with them. They might not know that your intentions are to stop eating dairy because you might think that, you know, it's your whole world. You've thought about it, but they might not even literally might not even know that you're thinking about it. And so they might just be buying you, you know, frozen yogurt pops. And you're like, ah, damn it. Stop buying those. So you got to talk to them. Have a mature conversation. Treat yourself as an adult. When you start treating yourself as an adult, your parents start treating you as an adult a little bit more. Don't wait for them. Have a mature reasoning for why you want to do it. And they should be able to understand that I want to try something different with my diet, especially for my acne, and I want to see if it'll help. Don't get into anything else. Just say it like that. And if they can't understand that, I don't know. Your parents are missing, missing logic entirely. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Did you use, this is actually a really good question. Did you ever wear makeup to cover up? So I never wore makeup makeup, but I did actually try it once. So I went to, um, I went to CVS at one point because I had some sort of thing where I was going to be in front of people. I don't know if it was like a talk, a speech, something, school, or if it was an event or something. I, I completely forget. But it was back when my acting was really bad. And it was back when I didn't know a lot about stuff. So I went to CVS, it's like a general store, and I got, I don't know, like Revlon. I don't know, some random, uh... Uh, foundation. It was like a liquid foundation. And I just picked one randomly. And girl, girls are laughing at this. Guys, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I don't even know what I'm talking about. But girls are laughing at this because I just picked one that I thought looked like my skin color. And I was like, yeah, that looks like me. It was, it was like, <laughs> it, it, it'd be like me trying to pass myself off as a native, like Mexican or something like that from Mexico. Like I'm so many, so many, whatever you call it, shades away from it. I tried putting it on and it was just like, I had a mask on from here it was terrible so I tried that once and it didn't work I, which I don't know I don't you know I was just like desperate at that point but I had uh, another funny story is I had um this medication stuff or whatever this ointment you put on your face that you put it on a, on a zit and it was like a spot treatment it would dry it but it was also brown colored and so I wasn't even trying to cover up my zits I was just trying to use the drying out thing but then there was little brown spots and I thought they weren't really noticeable but I remember I went to high school one day and uh you know those like those kids who have no no filter uh, one of these kids He's like wearing an SRH shirt and these long dickies and stuff. And he was just like, dude, are you wearing makeup on your face? And there's like eight dudes in a circle that I just walked up to. So I'm just getting roasted by all these dudes at once. And they're like, oh, it's makeup, dude. Let me see. And then I'm like, dude, I just tried to use some spot treatment stuff. You know, I'm not try out here trying to wear makeup or nothing. I don't even understand what it is. But yeah. Um... The makeup thing is actually really interesting. I would say, because a lot of girls will ask me this, like, what, what about makeup? Should I wear makeup? Because I, I often talk about um, loving yourself so that you can accept yourself regardless of whether or not you get your acne clear and then still work on clearing up your acne. But rather than gaining your confidence from having a clear face, I think you should work on yourself so that you have confidence before your acne even clears up. And then when it clears up, your, your confidence isn't based on that. You know what I mean? And it, and it gets a lot better, but... Um, yeah, a lot of girls will ask me because I say that kind of stuff, preach that kind of stuff. They're like, do you think it's still okay for me to use makeup? And I'm like, yeah, if it makes you more comfortable then I think you should, I don't think you should base your entire confidence off of it. But like training wheels, yeah, you can put some makeup on there to get out into public and then start growing your confidence. And then eventually one day you're going to be like, you know, I don't need this makeup. But, uh, I always say makeup's going to make your acne worse. Even if you're going to get that non-comedogenic makeup, the stuff that's proven by dermatologists, et cetera, et cetera. While it may be better than obviously some of the other things who are more cloggy to your pores, it's, it's still stuff you're putting on your face all day, man. You're really asking a lot to have all these little holes on your face, not get like gather debris from stuff that you're putting on top of those holes all day. So I, I you know, I say, uh, moderation perhaps when it comes to makeup, uh, red marks have lasted for two years, but they're flat. What should I do? Um, Obviously, those aren't active anymore. Those those are just red marks and, and hyperpigmentation. I would say that you should try a few different of the remedies that, that are out there, like aloe vera gel for like a super light one, or like I think vitamin C serum. It's, a, it's pretty intense, but it's good for redness. Again, look all this stuff up. Don't just take me at my word for this, but try some of those different things. Google it out. Um, see if anything helps. And if it doesn't help, then go to your dermatologist because your dermatologist is going to have something a little bit more severe, some sort of a better game plan with that. If anybody wants to ask me questions about dermatologists either, I have the lowdown, man. I could go off about dermatologists and how all that works. Thank you for being you. Thank you for, yo, thank you for uh, uh, supporting. I appreciate the howdy, guys. Uh, just one second to talk about the channel. For some reason, in the last week, 
two videos, two acne videos have blown up. One is exactly what to do with uh, as assist from experience. And the other one is don't touch your face and watch what happens. Both of them have gone to 1.6 million views over the last week, meaning that the channel has gotten two to three million viewers just for the acne stuff lately. So that's why I wanted to do the stream is because I know some new people are here and I just wanted to address stuff that people maybe haven't seen from the older parts of the channel. But yo, thank you guys. My week has just been like, skyrocketed I'm so happy about that and I have no idea where it came from but I'm just so appreciative also shout out to PETA for posting me twice so cool what do you think triggers acne I've been vegan for one and a half years now and all of a sudden I got some in my forehead there's a lot of different things that trigger acne but the scientific reason or at least what we've come to conclude the reason that we get acne is because of an excess amount of a response a signal response in your body something called m torque so if you want to Google it later, it's a lower case M and then all caps T O R C M torque. It's a, it's a response that comes from like so many different things, but when you have lots of alcohol or lots of sugar, if you have like all sorts of like no water, all sorts of different things, obviously just think of things that tax your body, your M torque goes up. Your body can only have so much M torque in it before it has to figure out ways to, to purge it out, get it out. And so when your M torque gets past your, your line that you can handle, that's when all these different things start happening. Cysts and um, uh, irritable bowel syndrome and, and like all these digestive issues and all sorts of different stuff. And acne is one of those things. And um, for me, dairy has been proven for, I think it's been proven for everybody to increase your M torque some amount. But for me, I was having so much and I already had so much M torque from all the weird stuff I was doing as a little kid, like eating way too much Splenda. I was having like a box a week. I'm not even kidding you, a box, 80 servings of it a week. Uh, and all that kind of stuff was just aggravating me over time and causing me to break out. So um, you gotta you gotta try to do things that are gonna bring your M torque down or not aggravate it as much. And you can be pretty obvious with this at first, especially if you're someone who violates a lot of bad stuff, you can start trying to delete some of these things from your life and see if it helps. Like for example, if you drink all the time, not great. If you binge drink all the time, probably extra not great. If you're not drinking water because you're binge drinking, triple double not good. If you're smoking cigarettes when you drink, but only when you drink, still super not good. You see what I'm saying? You you get you know if you're someone who drinks and you don't go sleeping, uh, not good. If you're not cleaning your bed, you know what I mean. You just keep sleeping in the same bed for a year, not good. You know what I'm saying? You could just keep going down the line with it. Sometimes I go on little tangents and I don't, I don't know if I should stop just blabber jabbing and go back to the questions. Um, who's your favorite singer? That's, that's a good question. Probably Kurt Owen. Kurt Owen music. <laughs> uh, just started Accutane today. Any tips? Good question. Nice. Good question. So I have had a lot of people uh, Snapchatting me, messaging me lately and saying they started Accutane. First off, congrats to all of you who are starting. I know it is a very big choice and I always exaggerate it. I say really make sure you are ready to start it because it is a serious thing that's about to happen to you. So make sure you're okay with the side effects. But now that you already are there and you are okay with the side effects, I would say right now, go on Amazon and buy 100 packs of chapstick. Buy so much chapstick because you're gonna to get to a point where you're like, you, you, you know, right now you're probably like, yeah, dude, I have chapstick, I have plenty of chapstick. You're gonna to get to a point where you don't have chapstick for an hour, and I know that sounds ridiculous. You're gonna be at class or something for an hour or work or something, and you can't leave. Like, no longer is it a funny joke. You cannot leave. All you can do to make your dry lips less dry is lick them. Don't lick your lips they'll get more dry. And after an hour, your lips will start bleeding. I'm not kidding you. So make sure you get your chapstick. Hey, and if you're going to buy it from Amazon, use amazonbrian.com. It redirects you to the homepage. Amazon it gives a small commission. It's great. It doesn't cost you anything. Appreciate that. Amazonbrian.com. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I would say also have tons of moisturizer on deck. You're going to be cracking and stuff. So like I used to crack in these smile wrinkles and stuff. Or if like, hey, uh, you're right here, it would, it would crack. Um, Oh, and these little, like the bird crow lines or whatever, like he laugh, <laughs> that hurts. So like your face gets so, so dry. So make sure you have moisturizer, it helps a lot. I would say also make sure you have sunblock because if you go out into the sun and it's, um, I mean, even if it's not hot, if there's any sun at all, and I mean, even if there's clouds and sun's pushing through it, you're gonna feel it within like 10 seconds. And if you're out there for more than five, 10 minutes, you're gonna be burning. I mean, like it's gonna hurt really bad. You're gonna be really, really red. So make sure you stay out of the sun and that you have sunblock. Um, and then other than that, man, 
everything else is going to be like small details that you'll gain as you go, depending on how you live your life and stuff like that. So, uh, for example, for me, I had like tons of pillowcases and tons of pillows so that I could just switch them constantly. Um, sometimes because my face was so dry, I would be bleeding from my face when I'd go to sleep because my face was like more ready to crack and start bleeding or like pop a zit or something like that. And so I'd have so many cysts that when I'd lay down, I'd be pressing on cysts and sometimes I'd wake up and it'd be wet. I know it's gross, but I'd have the cyst drain while I was sleeping. And so I would just like in the middle of the night, pick up one pillow and throw it across the, the room, across the street, grab another pillow. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to mention about Accutane. Don't drink alcohol for, for another one. Do not drink alcohol. And if you are, man, be so careful. Some kids are drinking every weekend while they're on Accutane. Accutane is a huge liver irritant. So you're already, imagine Accutane as getting pretty drunk every night. You know what I mean? Like imagine each 20 to 30 milligrams of Accutane as like a full pint of beer or something like that. You know what I mean? Because when you're doing both, these kids have had actual serious medical issues happen or they get massively severely dehydrated dehydration is definitely a huge huge thing with acting joint pain is also a huge thing so i'd say get some chondroitin gosh damn it there was one other thing though i can't remember what it was i really wanted to i can't remember make sure you take your accutane with fat too because it is a fat soluble vitamin so if you eat it with fat it's going to transport to you better at the beginning i wasn't eating any fat with my accutane i was just taking it like a pill in the morning with no food and i just completely didn't absorb any of it that's why we kept raising and raising and then one day he was like are you eating fat with these and then i found that out Hey, Brian, I typed this message seven times, but just can't read it. I just want to say thank you because your videos helped me clear my acne. Hey, much love, man. I appreciate the hell out of that. There's so many, so many, so many, so many people that message me with that kind of a message, and it makes me so happy. This is the, the reason that I was put on this earth is, is to figure things out myself and then use whatever I can, my knowledge or whatever, whatever tools I have to help other people. You know, whether that's education or whether that's featuring other people who have information or stories or whatever it is that can help other people. I think that's what I was put here for. So you guys give me a platform to do that. So a little cheesy moment over. Just want to say thank you. Is your skin type still oily? Very quick, good question. So my, my skin type was extremely Oh, I'm sorry. I think we got cut out there for a second. Someone called me. Anyways. Uh, when, I, when I first was getting my really, really bad cystic acne, my terrible acne, my face was extremely oily. Um, now, over time, because of the Accutane, I'm sure of, um, but also because of my diet changes, just eating a little bit more healthy and less goofy, like legit, I was eating really goofy stuff. I was eating like fat-free cheeses and stuff like that. That stuff's not good for your body. After all that stuff, and now, um, my face is a lot less oily. I guess it does get kind of shiny at some times, but not, not heavily. Not, not really, 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 really bad. Oaksterdam says, how do you treat whiteheads? I don't know what they're called. They're not zits though. I think I know what you're talking about. You're talking about those, they're like, it's complicated. It's like a black head that's not black, right? It's like a hard, solid white head that you can try to pop or, or like, you know, prick with a needle or something like that. But when you push on it or you're just waiting for goo to come out, no goo comes out. And if you push hard enough, a little tiny, like little white piece will come out. But it's not a black head. It's not black, right? And now I'm, I'm not entirely sure what these are because there's a lot of different things for different people. Some people are saying it's uh, milk spots. Yeah, I've heard of uh, milia and candida. I think candida is something different. Candida, I think, is something to do with um, bacterial infection. Um, but but milia is those little tiny but, little dots, I believe. And um, I believe that it comes from diet, but I, I didn't really have that kind of acne, so I don't really know too much about those. So it seems like a lot of people have a lot of information on these. I'd say look up milia and I'd say look up sebaceous filaments. Uh, have you ever met any ce celebrities? Good question. I have. It depends on who you think is a celebrity. Um, but C.T. Fletcher, I shot for him contractually for like two years. And when I was shooting with him, I was able to shoot Terry Crews. So I spent a whole day with Terry Crews shooting him and C.T. talking about their childhoods and stuff like that. That was intense. It was really, really cool. Other than that, I met like Michael Hearn. I've met like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think I've met a few other people, but unless they're like heroes to me, I kind of forget that they're a celebrity. And I just don't really care that much. Uh, Steve-O keeps coming to these events that I'm at. I'm really excited about that. So one day I'm going to meet Steve-O. Uh, and then uh, Reggie Watts, I'm about to hopefully meet at the Regent Theater when I'm talking there next month at Circle V. So I'm really excited about that in LA. I hope I can, can meet Reggie Watts. He's my man. Any tips on how to stop skin picking? 
totally awesome good question um there's it's hard man it's just like building any other habit you really got to be conscious about it it's not something you're just gonna like you know start eating more carrots and then all of a sudden you're gonna stop picking your face you're gonna have to be really thoughtful about it so start realizing i'd say that probably the first step is start realizing what makes you uh touch your face pick your face is that when you're chilling out watching netflix you know what i mean is that when you're in class and you're bored is it like right before bed decide when it is that you're doing that and then start attacking how you can stop doing that um i think that'll help you a lot if you can identify like what your trigger is and then start building a negative feedback for it you know what i mean so like maybe every time you catch yourself picking your face you got to do like 10 air squats or like five push-ups or something like that serious please do a video on fo folliculitis okay i'll put it in the, i'll put it in the list how do you get your protein in without uh, whey protein check out my full day of eatings i feel like um, my whole channel is about that now i'm, I'm trying to put some new video content content styles up uh, and do more live streams so i'm planning on changing up the channel a little bit with content but every friday i put up a full day eating or every saturday i put up a full day eating um and it shows you what i eat in a day and it shows you how much protein i get i get somewhere around like 130 to 160 grams of protein every single day and i don't even try i legit sometimes go over and i'm like oops too much i'm 10 when am i gonna have acne you know when i was 10 uh i remember looking at acne uh, you know on teenagers and my friends and my brothers and stuff and i was like man i can't wait to have acne I think this goes through every little kid's head. Man, I want to have acne. You know, I want to have a beard. I want to have armpit hair. I want to have pubic hair. And I want to have acne. I want to be an older man or woman or whatever. And uh, you get acne. And then you're stoked. I remember I got my first acne and I was like, yeah. <laughs> Just popping them and super pumped about it. And then you realize that your face is really red. And then you realize that the acne is coming all the time. And then you realize that you kind of wish you didn't have acne. And then acne is all over your face and you got cysts. It doesn't happen to everybody but happened to me. So I'd say be careful with your diet. Don't drink too much dairy, man. If you can, take it all the way out. 100%. You're going to have a way better life health-wise, but especially acne-wise. Um, but yeah, that's how I caused mine when I was a little kid is I didn't have acne and I started drinking tons of milk to gain muscle mass. And uh, that really started my cystic acne. How do you balance acne treatments and gym workouts? Sweating from cardio makes my face break out really bad the next day. Um, Luckily for me, I, I I just run to the locker room as soon as I finish my workout and I wash my face so the sweat is off. I also have something called Aquanil, which is like a super light cleanser. So sometimes if I remember, I'll put that in my bag and I'll use it right after my gym workout to wash my face. So I guess that was kind of something that I, I have for my treatments, but I haven't used it for a couple months. That's why I didn't mention it earlier. Um, but I would say that you just got to see what, what makes you break out and what doesn't make you break out and kind of like work your way around that. For example, when I was doing the treatments, when I was getting Dermapen treatments, I got three of them. Um, I, I had to stay out of the gym for th two days and then the third day I could come back, I believe, afterwards because my face was so red and open that if I was sweating, it would definitely make me irritated and break me out. So I had to, you know, plan it out. So you just got to plan it out, you know. Don't take a rest day this day and then use your rest day on this next part of the week. I mean, it's... Not ideal. There's no ideal way to do it, right? Do you know what the caveman regimen is? If not, look it up. I do not. Um, this video makes me realize I'm not alone. That's amazing. Dude, that's that's what I want my channel to be. Like, I really want everybody to block this user. I'm going to put this user out of the channel. I'm using bad words. Uh, th that's what I want this channel to be. I, that's what I want my content to be because... I want to I want to educate. I want to help people get rid of their acne, but really I want you to be more confident with yourself. I think that's the 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 root issue with all of people dealing with acne, trying to get it cleared up, is that you feel some type of way about it, your self esteem or something. You know, you feel some way, and you uh, usually are living a little bit handicapped. You're li living a little bit more reserved than you should be because your acne makes you think about it. And I want people to become comfortable with themselves and confident with themselves without getting rid of the acne. And then if you can get rid of the acne too, that's a double plus, but I would rather help your self-esteem get clear than your acne get clear, if that makes sense. Do you think if you started eating meat again, you would start breaking out? Yeah, I don't know, I don't know about that. Um, the thing that was really breaking me out was milk. Milk was really breaking me out. So when I took that out, I saw positive effects from that. Then I overdosed on vegetables. I really tried to have a lot, 12 to 16 servings, and I saw a lot of improvement from those things. From there, I just thought, hey, those two diet changes helped a lot. I'm gonna try out this vegan thing just for fun. I'm gonna take meat out. I already really don't really uh, like the videos that I had been seeing at the point, seeing how meat is sourced and all that stuff. So I took it out and things got 
more clear. I mean, they were already getting pretty clear. So I don't, I, I couldn't say that it's a positive correlation, but I will say that I, I'm not going to ever go back to, to meat. Once your acne went away, how long did it take for your acne scars to go away? Awesome question. Really smart question. Um, I would say I had pretty decent scars, but I, I wouldn't say that I have had those, those scars that, that, you know, people are really worried about those really, really deep ones. I had probably medium severity ones. Um, so my acne scars were super apparent. I had a really red face for probably about three, four months. Um, and I was using retin-A afterwards. So a, a, a ointment that you put on your face takes off the top layer of dead skin over time. That starts helping even out the depth of your scars. And I'd say about six months in, I had seen some pretty decent improvement. And then by 12 months, I had seen a good improvement. It, they weren't gone yet, but I'd seen a lot of improvement. And at that time, I had waited the year that I was told to wait until I did, you know, some sort of a, a treatment for the scars, whether that's like a chemical peel or a dermapen or a laser. I decided to go with dermapen. So then I did three sessions of dermapen. It was cool. We worked it out. He gave me like $100 off. So I spent like $300 per. I think I spent like $1,100 total with everything included. Um, and that video went to like a million something. That dude, so it's it's crazy to me. He got like 15 customers that came in from that video. I was pumped about that. It, it blew my mind that uh, so many people were interested in just watching someone's face get all bloodied up. But yeah, that's that's what else I did for my acne scars. And I think the dermapen did really help. It just took a long time to see the results. But I wouldn't say that you need to do it. Like if you have scars that kind of bother you, but you're not a rich person, you don't have a lot of money, then I wouldn't say you should go for them because you'd probably be relatively disappointed. I did it because I knew I wanted to have the full circle when it came to my videos of here's me with really bad acne, here's me treating it, and then here now that it's clear, here's what I do about the scars. Because I know people want each piece of information. So for me, it was more so honestly about that than my own scars because I don't really care. I really don't care. Like you'll see people commenting about my forehead line right here because I'm expressive and I like to talk like this. And yeah, dude, this is gonna get real, real gnarly when I'm like 50, it's gonna be deep. But I don't think people realize, like, I don't, I don't care. So people keep like giving me suggestions and stuff. And I'm like, yo, it, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? And I think that's, that's how everybody should get more like, because it's, it's okay. If your face doesn't look quote unquote perfect, because quote unquote perfect is not actually perfect. Um, I have dry skin and I can't use most soaps or lotions and I do well with eating and not drinking milk. What do I use? Definitely don't use any soaps on your face. Um, lotion can sometimes help, but I don't think you, you really need it either. Um, you said you're not drinking milk and are you eating tons of vegetables? Are you getting lots of, of water in? And then have you tried all the other things to check off? Um, I have a video called, I think it's called easy, medium and difficult things to try to get your acne to go away and go watch that and see if you tried all those things. Cause there's some things that are small that you don't really realize. And then you, you start to mess with it and you're like, Oh, that helped a lot. I guess I don't change my pillowcases very often. You know what I mean? What fruits and vegetables would you recommend for someone who's dealing with acne? I would say that the vegetables that are the most effective are the ones who are really, um, cruciferous. That's the word crunchy, like really, just think of the vegetables that you don't want to eat is what, you know what I mean? Like not the, not like potatoes, you know, or like carrots, I guess are pretty decent, but I'm trying to think of like a really lame vegetable, like lettuce, like crunchy water, lettuce. That's probably not going to have quite as much of an effect because the phytonutrients, minerals that are in it, um, mi micronutrients are not as plentiful, but if you get something like broccoli or kale or asparagus or green beans or bok choy, or maybe like bell peppers and stuff like that. Uh, root vegetables. Yeah, things like that. Those are going to have a lot of nutrients in them. And I think overdosing the nutrients into your body is, is what really helps. I think that's the secret. Is that we're basically just evening out the balance of bad to good stuff that's in our body. And usually when we have acne, we don't realize it. Because I was one of those guys. I was like, I eat so healthy. Do not talk to me about how I eat. I eat healthier than you could ever imagine. But then at the same time, I was eating like frozen foods and I was having tons of Splenda. Like, you know what I mean? You just, you always think that you're right. So it's an evening out of good and bad. What do you think about Indian food? Does it affect acne? That's hard to say. Each person has a predisposition towards different triggers and things that cause acne. So some people have, um, you know, 
uh, allergy to dairy and soy. So if they have dairy or soy, then their acne starts to break out. Some other people can drink a whole gallon of milk and have a pizza and have a bunch of soy afterward. Nothing happens at all. So each person has a different predisposition. And so you kind of have to test out and see what works and what doesn't work for you. For example, when I came um, off of Accutane, I kept tr like testing it out and I would try some dairy to see if dairy was really the culprit that I thought it was. I'd try some dairy. So I remember... Uh, we did like donuts one time. We tried that as an experiment. Uh, another time I did frozen yogurt. And oh, and the other time was a Quest bar, one of those protein bars, because I, th I figured that was kind of small. It was only 160 calories. And I wanted to test and see if it would affect me. And each time, the next day, I could feel a pressure point. You know, and people with cysts, you know what I'm talking about. You feel a pressure point, you can't see it yet. And then the following day, so 48 hours, every time I tested it after taking dairy in, I would have a full-blown cyst. And the cyst would stick around for two to four weeks that long. And so for, for me, that was a affirmative, that was evidence, exhibit A, B, and C for me. Right? I'm not saying this is true for everybody, but for me, that if I have um, dairy, I'm going to break out. So you got to test out what breaks you out and what doesn't break you out. Maybe you can eat as much Indian food as you want, but you can't have too much sugar or something. Or maybe too much salt. Who knows? I'm really enjoying this. You guys are awesome. Uh, does drinking soda affect your acne? For me, um, yes, it does, just because of the large amount of sugar, just like the processed sugar. Um, and I've heard that for a lot of people, but again, each person. Who knows? What's up, buddy? Hey, what's up, Justin Holland? Much love, man. Did you get joint pain on Accutane? If so, how did it affect your training? I'm a professional ballet dancer. I wanted to go, but I'm worried about how it affect my body. If you can stay away from Accutane, then I would say stay away from it, especially if you're a high-performance uh, athlete or if your career depends on your athleticism. If I would have known um, a lot of things about Accutane, I think I would have I tried for even longer to stay off of it. But Accutane, um, it caused a lot of back pain for me. I had a little bit of some knee pain, a little bit of some elbow discomfort and stuff but really my back got real tight my upper back got real tight and it made it to a certain point that I couldn't squat because I was squatting somewhere around 315 to 360 pounds for like you know 6 to 12 reps so I was able to do it relatively easily and it made something that was really easy for me actually uh, impossible I couldn't do it anymore so I had to stop squatting uh, and deadlifting in the middle of my Accutane treatment I still am trying to get back to that and my back still has issues where my back is extremely tight and I feel like it's more fragile as well all that being said to say, really evaluate how bad is your acne compared to how much you want your athletic performance to not suffer at all. You know, if even a 5% change in athletic performance is too much for you to lose, then don't do it. Yeah, I feel like that was a good answer. Lowering my body fat percent made my pimples more frequent. It's interesting. I wonder if it's uh, I wonder if it was an increase in interesting weird diet foods. You know, some people will eat like really funky shit when they're dieting. Some people will drink like eight sodas, diet sodas, right, to keep food coming in without actually increasing their caloric intake. So that might be part of it. I'm full of acne scars. How do you stay so positive? Thank you for asking that. I love talking about the positive aspect. It is so tough to have acne and to stay positive, but at the same time, when you get older, you're gonna realize how much better your life was because you had acne. It builds character. It, it makes you empathetic and sympathetic towards other people's plights and issues that they have to go through. And that in itself is something that's gonna make you more human than and than any other thing you're gonna have to deal with being able to identify with somebody else who's going through something difficult on a real level where you actually care is like giving a, a present to somebody that you know couldn't ever get that present on, on their own you know what i'm saying just because think about how badly you feel right now and then think about being able to be the person who's like yo don't even worry about it i don't care let's go get some Let's go to the mall and hang out. Let's, let's go chill out. Let's go hike or something. I could give a damn about your acne. You know what I mean? When you realize that there's a lot of people out there, i.e. you, so you can't, you can't say there's no one out there. When you start to realize that there's a lot of good people out there, you stop caring so much about what the bad people have to say about you. Because bad people have a lot to say. They don't think about it a lot. They don't have a lot of thought processes going behind their words. They're just blasting them out because it's coming from their emotions and not from their logic. But when it comes to people who have developed and have worked on themselves and are actually progressing and becoming a better person over time, those people will never demean you for something that is not in your control. And that's how I stay positive, is knowing that there are good people out there. And when I maybe have felt bad when someone has said something about me, I just remind myself that that person is, at the moment, not worth it. They are worth less to me at that moment because they haven't put self-development into themselves. So being friends with them anyways would have just deterred from me building my own self and self-developing my own life. 
So it's good not to have those people. So for me, it's a good thing that I have had acne and I would never go through life again without acne. <sighs> uh, did, there's some weird questions in here, something about wiping, wiping butts. Uh, did you meet Sammy with acne? Yes, I did. I did. I, I met her with my acne, but it wasn't quite the full Monty. It wasn't like full sits and everything. I just had a bunch of like um, white heads and things like that. Lots of red heads and stuff. And it's funny, actually, she had acne too, which was which was cool for me. Some like I know a lot of you guys again are like, how do I get rid of acne? I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it blah, 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 blah. I think it's great. I think as you begin to love yourself, you begin to love your flaws if that's what you call them and for me I love my acne and now I just love acne period so when I see girls with acne I'm like get it girl you know what I mean especially when they're not wearing makeup and they're just rocking it I'm just like fuck yeah dude I mean I'm not gonna say it out loud because it might make you feel bad that I'm talking about it but inside I'm like fist bumping the shit out of you because that's freaking tight um and I remember uh she had acne when I first met her and I was just like nice this is gonna work out this is gonna be tight uh, what do I think about uh, dermabrasion? I think dermabrasion is great. It's just about getting a good price. So I'd say talk to your person that you can get in a hold with and see what the prices are and see if you can get them to drop it a little bit. I mean, honestly, all they're doing is just taking a little pen that tattoos your face basically without ink and just moving it around. Um, dermabrasion, uh, I believe, also is the spinning thing. That I don't know quite as much about because I never really used that one because I just didn't hear really good reviews when I was reading about it. I went and just searched every acne scar treatment and I only looked at like two or three after I had read all the reviews because most of them, they were saying like, yeah, it kind of helps, but if you're going to do anything, spend your money on something higher end than doing a lot of like the microdermabrasion or I mean the spinning dermabrasion thing. Uh, have you ever felt self-conscious, self-conscious or not confident because of your skin? How'd you overcome it? Um, so my, my self-consciousness time, my era of being, um, you know, nervous and stuff was in high school. So when I was in high school, it was pretty rough because I'd come from homeschooling. I'd skipped eighth grade. So up to seventh grade, I was homeschooled, skipped eighth grade, came into high school at ninth grade, first year, freshman, only knew one person from soccer. Everybody else came from middle school and knew each other. So I had no friends. Life was really hard. Everyone's always picking on the new kid. The new kid has acne, really easy target made me feel terrible it was it was rough but at the same time I've always kind of had like a macho especially back then I had like a macho-esque personality so I was trying to prove the point like I wasn't trying to like be sad in front of people or let people know I cared so when people make fun of my acne I just laugh and I'd be like right dude right (laughs) um but again like I'm saying as I got older and I realized who these people were I stopped caring as much luckily at the same time I also filled I filled my social anxiety with a passion that changed the whole way I evaluated everything. So when I had my really bad acne uh, at 15 or 16 or so, when it was getting really cystic, and that was the same time I'd started lifting, which is why I was taking so much dairy in, because I was trying to gain muscle as I was lifting. So my acne got worse, but my confidence got better because I was focusing, pinpointing in on this thing that I knew was going to be my career. I love lifting. It's a passion of mine that I'll never lose. So I was able to go to the school in the daytime talk to these kids. They make fun of me, call me Rudolph. I have to do a speech in front of kids. They're talking about my zit about to explode, blah, blah, blah. Make me feel terrible. I go in my car and it was super rough. But at night, every single night, without a doubt, I will be able to go to that gym and I'll be able to lift. It's not going to not be there. The gym's not going to tell me that it thinks I look a certain way, so I'm not allowed to come in. The gym didn't give a damn. The weights don't give a damn. And it was one thing that I just had complete control over, and I just decimated it compared to anybody that was my age. So I was, in one respect of my life, something that I was super passionate about, I was able to put all of my focus and time into. And when you have something to you that's grandeur, it's very large and, and, and important to you, It you put all your time and focus into it. And then all the little white noise crap you don't have time for it, man. Like, think about it. Like, if you're doing million dollar deals and then someone's like, hey, man, I'll give you a hundred bucks to mow my, like, mow my lawn, right? If you had no money, you'd be like, hell yeah, I want to mow your lawn, hundred bucks, baby. But if you're making million dollar deals every day, you're going to be like, who cares about your hundred dollars? Take that somewhere else, man. Same thing. When you're worried about important things and then people are like, yo, you got a bunch of acne on your face, dude. You look like Volcano Man or whatever. You're going to be like, cool. You want to go to my gym with me? What do you do it? What, what else do you do? Oh, you just jabber. 
it makes it a lot easier to dismiss it for real get a passion and all the small things that people are saying to you are going to hail in comparison to the big things that you're doing and you'll have real things to talk about stand behind and work on and when you get older those people are going to start realizing that acne didn't matter and the thing that you had gotten passionate about was something that they wish they would have gotten passionate about and you had a reason to dive into your passion which was having some self-esteem thing that you needed to work on that's what drove me into my biggest passion and i'm stoked that it did that now i'm you know many years into cinematography many years into bodybuilding and two two of my biggest passions I admire you being able to ignore people taking the piss. I love that phrase. I'll be 100% confident talking to anyone until I see them stare at my acne. Then it immediately affects my my confidence. It is not a it's not a surefire thing, right? Like it's not it's not like it's it's not like um you know you're unconfident about your acne and then you're asking people who are 100% perfectly confident about their acne and then one day you'll just figure it out and you'll just be mega confident. You can go on television with a sis ukin and you know and you'll be fine. It's not always going to be easy. And even when you get to a point where you're like, you know, I genuinely don't care. I just genuinely don't care. I actually am totally fine with it. You'll still have a point where you are, you know, you're going to be like, damn, I, w I wish, I wish he wouldn't do that. You know, why are you staring at, look at me in the eyeballs or someone mentions something and it just hits you the wrong way and you just weren't prepared for it. You aren't always going to have a confident face, but it's just about having the best Always taking the best response and approach to every situation. Not that you're always going to be perfect, right? But always being positive about it. And when you get down, remember those things I was saying earlier about the person who's saying it, either not thinking and knowing that it's something that was affecting you and they weren't trying to be rude, or they are trying to be rude and they're just a worthless person spitting weightless words because they've put no weight to them. <sighs> breathing, baby, breathing. Hey, yo, hey, I appreciate that. I just saw... Man, I've, I've never really done this live streaming on YouTube. I usually do it on Instagram now, so I'm not used to live streams on YouTube, but apparently there's a bunch of new stuff. Uh, I know there's something called Super Chat, and it looks like YV just donated 100. I don't even know what that is. I think that might be yen or something. I don't know. That's a weird currency, but I appreciate that. Thank you for becoming a Super Chat donator. Uh, he says, hey, Brian, I've been vegan for six to seven months. I've been struggling with acne on my back and spreading to my shoulders and chest. I would say try doing what I've told people to do. Obviously, you said you're vegan, so you already aren't getting any dairy at all. Try to increase the amount of water that you're taking in. Try to increase the amount of uh, vegetables that you're getting in. Try to get at least 12 servings of it. It's a lot, but that is going to help a lot. And then from there, try to do the different Indian rupees. Interesting. I don't know anything about currencies, man. And then from there, try to find out the, the small different things that you can change that might be able to change and help you because everyone's predisposed, predisposed to different triggers and stuff. So uh, look at some of my older videos. I have one that's called Easy, Medium, and Difficult Things to uh, Help Cure Your Acne and How I Limited My Acne. It's another one. And it's going to be a lot of different little things that you can try each week to just experiment and figure out what, what's best for you. How to get rid of blackheads on the nose, Brian. Cheers. Uh, check out the, the video that I just put out, uh, How to Extract Blackheads from Experience, I think it's called. That is the best way to do it. With those uh, utensils is going to be the best been typing this like a hundred times, I'm sorry. Um, but the problem is what you're gonna run into this part of your nose, that fold area right there, and then the fold area right there. I'm getting all close up and stuff. But obviously you won't be able to get the circle tool on those things, and you also can't do the old fashioned like pick and smash. I don't really have a solid answer for you to be honest, because I had those two, I'd have, I'd have them really strong and they'd be bigger there. Um, and I remember I would like, I would like, Press on them this way, and I guess that's one way to do it, but honestly, I would just say that there's not really a proper way, a best way to do that one. I would probably use the extraction tool, and I would steam my face for a long time, make sure it's nice and wet and pliable, and then try to work those out. But you know they are going to get more red than usual. Um, wait five hours, I'll, I'll donate 500 bucks. <laughs> We're just going to stream all day, son. Can kissing get rid of acne? Uh, no. Tips for getting rid of blackheads and clogged pores. Uh, I would say that for me, a lot of my blackheads came from allowing my sweat on my face to dry. And I think also, like, if you ever look in your, you remember when you were a little kid and you'd be laying in your room and you see a, a, a window with light coming through it and you could see all the dust particles floating around and stuff and you, you watch it kind of, uh, I think that same thing happens, but we just don't see it, right? You're walking around the gym or whatever place, right? And you get sweaty or you're hiking or something. You get sweaty and you don't realize how many little little heavy particles are in the air just floating around and you got a wet ass face. So you're just walking around just like absorbing, you're just like, you're like a towel for all that. So you're like a sponge, you're like a magnet. And then 
we let it dry on our face. And I think that's what clogs my pores. So I really am diligent. And you can ask anybody who's close to me that works out with me. I finish my last set and I go immediately to the locker room and wash my face immediately before I pee, before I put my bags in the locker, before I do anything with in photos, locker, anything. Wash your face as soon as you are done sweating. Not as soon as you start sweating. As long as you keep sweating, I think you're still good because the water's still coming out of your face. But when you let it start drying is when it gets bad. Does eating potatoes give you acne? Every person is different again. Um, but potatoes does not give me acne. Acne is all genetic and hormones. That, I would say that's not true. Um, and I'd say a lot of traditional stuff that you think you know is wrong. And dermatologists aren't even allowed to say certain things that they know are true just because they're told not to talk about it. Like food, for example, is out of their nexus of control. It's out of their bailiwhack. Bailiwick? Just trying to use a new word. It means like what they what they know and are professionally able to talk about. So dermatologists aren't even allowed to tell you to start working on your diet until eventually down the line they're like, "Are you still eating whey or something like that?" And then you're like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Hey, we're not supposed to talk about this, but try to take the whey out of your diet." So there is there is proof that certain things do trigger acne, like whey, which increases your mTOR. There's gonna be a book coming out this pretty soon. I'm in the book. It talks all about the science behind the foods that you eat and the increase of mTOR, which is what increases your acne. It's all gonna come out at some point. I'll talk to you guys about it when it comes out. Are you are we gonna die early from taking Accutane? I wish I wouldn't have taken it because there's a lot of things that you it just lies dormant. You'll be like, yeah, I feel fine. I didn't have really too heavy side effects. I just have some dryness, some joint pain, blah 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 blah. Ten years down the line, you get lower uh, lower intestine cancer, and you have to have the lower part of your duodenum taken out. So you have to have your intestines cut out. And, and sutured. That sucks. Um, obviously, I don't know if I'm going to be that or not be that, but I wish that wasn't even a possibility, you know. Um, again, though, you deal with acne at a younger age um, for most cases, not all of them, and when you're younger, you don't have a grasp on what's going on when you're older. When you're young, you're, you're staying alive. You're growing into life. You're not dying. You're getting you're growing, right? So nothing can kill you and nothing matters. If I'm going to die at 50, it's okay. I'm freaking 16, dude. 50 is like 100, you know what I'm saying? So things change. <laughs> I subscribe and turn notifications on. Hey, much love. I appreciate you. Hey, how can I bulk when I have acne? Because everything with high calories is kind of bad. Please help me. So yeah, you got to be more diligent since you're someone who breaks out. Uh, you can't just rely on mass gainers like everybody else does. You can't just drink uh, a gallon of milk, have a mass gainer, and have three big ass thousand calorie protein bars. You can't do that. You gotta, you good. You gotta be more careful and eat more clear whole foods. So instead of getting a thousand calorie mass gainer, what you gotta do is you gotta get a thousand calorie meal from like, you know, do like a bunch of potatoes or do a bunch of rice as your carb portion, then do a bunch of veggies on top of that, or in some tempeh or seitan or tofu for some protein and maybe some like soy sauce or something like that. Uh, that way you're having whole foods all in one thing instead of having like you know like chips or like some sort of pre-packed like health food and things like that uh yeah brian you just scared the crap out of me with dying early from taking it i know well this is why i try to tell people be aware of the side effects because some people are like brian stop talking about accutane as if it's something you shouldn't take i never said you shouldn't take it i said you should be aware of the side effects because if you take it and then you find out one of the side effects is not something you can bear with but it's coming anyways then you're going to be in depression and that is going to suck especially when it comes to these long-term side effects. When people start hearing about this stuff and they're like, wait, that's possible? Yeah, it's not a common occurrence, but it is very possible. It's higher than 4% people get that thing. I'm not talking about the thing I talk about, but whatever it is, right? And then people are like, oh crap, I wish I would have known that before I took acting. So I just encourage people to really research and know because otherwise you're gonna end up in some, some situations. Um... I'm taking azithromycin, 250 milligrams twice a day. Any thoughts on that? I've never heard of that one. I heard of a couple different ones while I was on it, um, but that was not one that I've ever heard of. <laughs> my, my derm is putting me on some lepro, rep, leprosy medication for acne. I know I had to go through a bunch of different stuff too. He was like, he was using like, um, Aldoster? Oh no, I forget what it was. He was using like um, anti-inflammatory shots on me and all this, and he's using like this this medicine that you take when you have like immune system deficiencies and stuff. I wish I could remember it. Prednisone, prednisone, terrible. If your doctor ever tries to take you on this, tell him no. Do some research first. Don't just take my advice, but do some research then tell him no. Prednisone is so terrible. It makes you feel terrible. It makes you gain fat. It makes you lose muscle. It's just, it makes you depressed. It just sucks and it doesn't do anything except for, it's supposed to be an anti-inflammatory. It didn't help me at all. It just made me feel terrible. Um, 
<laughs> I'm going to the dermatologist today. What should I expect? If this is your first dermatologist appointment, good question. If this is your first appointment with the dermatologist, he's going to talk to you about what you got going on. He's going to look at your face and you're going to tell him what you are concerned with, what you do, what 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 your life is like, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you're going to say what you want to do with your acne. If you don't, he'll give you some suggestions. But if you say, I want to do some acting, he's going to say, awesome, interesting. Have you tried antibiotics? He's going to say no, and then you're going to have to take antibiotics. So if you're planning on taking Accutane, you're going to have to go through antibiotics first. Then you're going to have to go through light uh, ointment creams like Retin-A, like 0.1%. And then you're going to have to do heavy ones, so Retin-A 0.2, 0.3%. Then after all those things, antibiotics and Retin-As don't work, then they'll start talking to you about Absorbica or Accutane and maybe allow you to do that. Then you're going to have to go through something called the iPledge program where you have to sign up and become registered as a user of the iPledge program so that they can track how much Accutane you're using because apparently people try to sell it and stuff uh, and it can kill people and it can cause like pregnancy problems. So they have to keep a good regulation on it. So after all of that stuff, then you're ready to take Accutane. So that's what you should expect if your purpose is to get on Accutane. Otherwise, expect a good time with your dermatologist telling you some things that maybe you haven't heard before uh, and some experimentation with medications coming up. Whew, there's so many. Oh my gosh. Can I remove blackheads while I'm on Actane? Uh, by the way, your channel is amazing. Hey, thank you. Much love. I appreciate you so much. Can you put other, put this on replay? This will all be on replay. Absolutely. We're going to stop in about 5-10 minutes here. Um, can you get rid of black blackheads while you're on Actane? Yes, you can. But two things. One, it's going to leave a larger red mark and it's going to be there for a lot more time. Uh, when I was on Accutane full on, my indentations would stay for a long time. So if I would, if I was dumb enough to press my nails, I'd have nail marks forever. If I was like cutting things with a little tiny scissors, like whatever, to cut a cap off, it would stay like that forever, be a hole there forever. If I was pushing on my face with a blackhead remover tool like that, it would stay a, a dent forever. So just be aware of that. But then also, when you're on Accutane, you're still breaking out, right? You're still overproducing sebum and stuff. Um, so you're more likely to replace those blackheads. So even if you squish them out, it's likely your blackheads will come back out. I did it so many times. I actually did it professionally. I didn't do it myself. I would go to my dermatologist after we do our checkup and all that kind of crap. I'd go over to the, the nurses and they do something called acne extra extraction surgeries where they take those tools plus some heavier tools. They would like use knives and stuff and they would extract all the blackheads that they could without damaging your skin further. I would have my whole face. You can go look back on my videos. You can look up uh, acne extractions. I'd have my whole cheeks, my whole cheeks and my whole forehead red and bleeding and it would stay like that for days and days and days and then my blackheads would be back. And I go back the next month and I do the exact same thing. So I would say that you can try to take some blackheads out. Maybe just do it once or twice and see if it helps overall. But if they just come right back, then I would say just leave them for now until your acne starts getting a little better. And then you can start, you know, taking them out when your face is clearing up a bit. Has surrounding yourself with the right people helped you with your acne journey? Much love, brother. Ahmed from 24. Hey, bro, man. Oh, bro, it's you. Hey, I saw a message from you somewhere and I just couldn't find it to respond. But I know you said you, you, you're not working there anymore, man. Bro, I want to say I love you so much and I hope I, I run into you again, man. Um, surrounding myself with the right people has absolutely changed the way that I deal with this. Again, like I was saying earlier, when people make fun of you for your acne, you can tell immediately that they're not a good person. And so when I started realizing that, I started to stop hanging out with people who weren't good to me. And without even realizing it, they drifted away and no longer became my friends. It's not like I broke up with everybody and I was like, yeah, I can't be friends with you because you're mean to me. I just, we kind of fell away from each other. And the people who were really nice and really encouraging and were focusing on things that I wanted to focus on, like my bodybuilding, my YouTube career, and my cinematography, the things that I wanted to talk about when I, you know, catch up with friends, the people who were interested in that, they stayed close and I got closer to them. I support them hella hard. They helped support me hella hard and it made it so much better because I'm like, oh, cool. All right, Steve that I just met, you making fun of me? That's nice. No one cares. These are all my friends and they don't care. Yeah, no, we've been friends since we were six. No one cares what you're saying. Okay, nice. That's nice. You know what I mean? So having like a good support group is awesome because you can, gen you can go to them and know that you're genuinely going to be listened to for what you want to be listened to rather than when you talk to new people all the time and you're having the guessing game of whether they're paying attention to you or judging your acting. You know what I mean? When you got Kurt, Ian, and Will, my best friends since I was like a child child, I know that they knew me before I was breaking out. They know me when I'm breaking out. They know me now that I'm, un, you know, I'm not breaking out more. They know me through all the phases and never cared about any of that stuff. They cared about what I was talking about and being happy about and passionate about. So make sure that you do give your good friends credit. Get close to them. Take the bad friends and move them a little farther out. Whew, man, there's a lot. 
I've been just blasting, man. I've just been blasting. Um, is the acne affected by academic stress? Absolutely. I'd say stress is a big factor. For me, stress was a big factor. Whenever I'd have like a speech or something that was really important, I would have to, um, that I would have to like do, I would definitely break out every single time. Whenever I was going to an expo, I knew it was coming up. I'd think about having acne or not. And I was like, nah, man, it shouldn't happen this time. It happened every single time. So I think that that also has a lot to do with it. Charlie Hannigan. Hey, thank you very much, man. I appreciate the donation. I think we made like 350 in this stream. <laughs> That's freaking cool. I didn't even know that there were donations. I didn't really understand how that works. Anyways, is Lanky Progress okay? How's his glass making out? So for those of you who don't know, Lanky Progress is my brother, my blood brother. He was here on the channel for about a year, about a year ago. So about two years ago is when we started being together and stuff. Um, we moved in together and then now he has moved out to his baby girl's house and he's taking care of her kids while she's getting all these crazy, crazy opportunities with her, her corporate job. Um, so LP is taking care of the babies. Uh, he's still lifting. He's still making glass. Um, he's just not making videos. Get on his Instagram. He's still posting and stuff. So if you guys want to check him out, Lanky Progress TV. Yeah, check him out. Show him love. Uh, He's my bet. He, like he's one of my best friends. He's my brother. I love him so much, and it makes me sad that we don't live together anymore because he made adventures so fun. Him and Kurt were like my sidekicks for so long. I miss him. Miss him. Miss him. Miss him. Miss him. Miss him. LP. Woo. <laughs> well, growing a beard or facial hair out make it worse or better? It depends. Again, for each person. Um, when I have a beard, I will break out more. You might actually be able to see some of the red marks. I'll break out more and I think that's because it's trapping oil in my beard. Whereas other people, I would say people who are already filled with acne, I think that having a beard might help because the hairs have to come through your follicles and will create a path for the sebum oil to come out of the sebaceous gland and out onto the surface of the skin rather than getting trapped under a closed pore and causing acne. So it's each person again. You deserve millions of subs. Hey, thank you. Much love. One day we're gonna be there, man. The fact that we're at 200,000 is already enough for me and I'm just, I'm blown away. So, hell yeah, million coming up. What's the average age when stop, what spots stop for men? Uh, usually for people, it's somewhere around the 20s, 23 to 28. It depends on the family history and all that kind of stuff. What do you think about oil blotting sheets? I'd say that they're useful if you are a very oily person who needs to get rid of your oil, yeah. I never used them, I just never knew how to, where to find them. Um, is cheap protein powder going to make my acne worse? Greetings, bro. I would say that it's not necessarily the fact that it's like, you know, not flavored or something like that. It's just the fact that if it's sourced poorly and it has other contaminants in it, then it's going to break you out. But I would say that all vegan protein powder is probably going to have the same effect of them on you. And they probably could make you break out more because they are concentrate versions of, of protein. Um, but I personally haven't seen any issues with it. Again, something you should evaluate. Brian, love you, bro. Lift heavier time, Myron. Hashtag Team Acne. Much love, brother. CT. TV on the week. <laughs> Shout out LP, John, Senior, Kurt, Sammy, Beyond the Week Squad, Ahmed from 24, man. Love you, dude. Actane and alcohol. Do not drink al alcohol while you're on Actane. If you are going to do it, man, you better have things planned the hell out. But don't drink often while you're on Actane because you're already taxing your liver to hell. And then you're going to take a bunch of alcohol in and your, your liver is just going to be mad at you. It's going to be pissed at you. All right, guys. That is it. Man, I could stay on forever because 164 people is enough for me to talk, 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 talk forever. I really, really could. I freaking love, love these live chats. And the fact that you guys came in here on a Tuesday with no warning. I didn't schedule this. and I didn't talk about it very much other than literally, I think, just yesterday. And the fact that there's so many of you guys jumping in here with questions, I think that shows that we definitely need to have a second time. Um, so I'm going to plan on doing some more live shows that are just general live shows, just Q&As for fun, for us to chat and have fun. But I'm also going to do it more live shows uh, just for acne related stuff. So Make sure that you guys keep your eyes peeled for that. Make sure you click the bell on my homepage, my YouTube for the notifications. Make sure you turn notifications on. Make sure that you like every video that you see on my channel. It helps so freaking much. I love you guys. If you're watching this on replay, I appreciate you guys for watching this for so long. Make sure you give a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Subscribe if you are not subscribed already. Team Beyond the Week. CT.